Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And today Eric and I are going to talk about an obscure magazine that I found when I was archiving some comics, Eric. Uh, I've got a bunch of old comic backstock from years ago when I was working on eBay that I'm finally going through and sorting and put in alphabetizing. And I found this little magazine called Flix. And this isn't like a monthly thing, it's this like one and done thing that I don't know if Wizard put this out or what, it looks like maybe a Wizard thing, and there's a big ad for Wizard on the back, so that's probably what it was. Uh, but this came out in 1999, and it's a guide to upcoming comic book movies, most of which either never happened or happened later in different ways. And I wanted to talk about this as a really interesting kind of time capsule piece, because what... If if everything or, cl or close to everything that happened in this in this uh, little magazine is what really transpired, today would look very very different. And so I want to look at this as what the future might look like now if this had it actually came true. If this is what transpired, and of course um, this kind of goes to show how movie making works and how finicky projects are until they actually start filming. You know, so many things in. Uh, in development hell and so many things that even get pre-production and then never actually come together and it's happened so much with with comic book stuff as we as we all know well uh kind, kind of recently with the the bill and ted thing they uh the is guys that, who made is that, that not said, happening well they got asked like people kept asking them and asking them and they just put out they're like we finished the script now you all get to see how long it takes for a movie to maybe get made wow like they were just like Today is the day that we finish the script. Let's see if this happens. And see, that's the thing about internet time and about Hollywood still being sort of old Hollywood in the middle of everything else changing, right? That you have uh, you have things that get announced, and we just assume they're going to happen, you know? And and yeah. like and like we we throw around the word confirmed way too much. You know how much Rasco likes to make fun of of confirmed and, and brings that up on live shows all the time. Well, the Geek Evolution movie, twenty eighteen, confirmed. We all still like kind of sat in denial, like, yeah, that wasn't a great start to the to the DC universe, but it was the start of the DC universe. Yeah, and I, but, but like, but like, you know, too often we just assume things are happening, uh, just because there is there is a supposed green light, or and of course a lot of the time these days we don't even like 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 people aren't even that concerned with a source. Oh, somebody said a thing, and it could have been taken out of context. It could have been, mm -hmm. and and just because a script is being shot around doesn't mean it's ever going to happen. So anyway, um, one of the one of the things uh, that I found immediately fascinating about this uh, about this magazine, and this is a thing that you don't see. All the time, or at least maybe the deal is just going back in time. You'd see it more often because these things, you know, um, uh, change, and we're just used to seeing now magazines when movies are mostly finished or in the middle of being made. But this has actors on the cover that didn't end up playing the roles that they're supposed to be playing, according to this. And this came out in '99, and it's primarily advertising. X Men before X Men has even gone into production. It's crazy how that they that they put this out as early as they did. So it knows about Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen and Femke Jansen and uh, uh, Rebecca Stamos, but then or or, or, or Roma, I'm sorry, she was she was a, a, a Romajan Stamos at the time. And then but then it's got um, somebody named Jim Cavizel as Cyclops. I don't, I don't even know who that is. And then um, at this time, we didn't even have Jackman yet. And it's got... Uh, well, Jackman didn't show up until they started filming. I know he was, like, the last guy on set. And I forgot about that. Like, like, like it, this is bringing back a lot of memories. Um, but, like, let's transport ourselves back to 1999. I mean, again, the big reason this is so interesting to me is... Um, we're talking about before anything like the comic book onslaught. I mean, this was the movie that started the whole thing. We had Blade. I, I, I actually remember picking up a Wizard magazine, and it had an image from X-Men. It was early on when Wolverine has his claws underneath the bartender. Yeah. Where it's that long shot of him like this. I remember seeing that picture and being like, 
oh man, it's finally happening. Yeah, I mean, it was a really it's big real. deal. Yeah, because we never. And the other thing to remember too is that is that not only was it the first major superhero movie outside of Batman for a long time. I mean, we had Blade, but I think a lot of people didn't even know that was a comic book thing. And I think Blade was the reason so that was a Fox thing. Um, that 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 uh, Blade was the reason that X Men was able to happen. I think, and um, it's it was also the first Marvel thing. Like like with a, with a big budget, um, but the guy that was uh, listed on here as playing Wolverine was uh, somebody named Doug Ray Scott. Yeah, he's a, he he ended up not doing X Men because he was doing Mission Impossible Two. And then that and and I actually read the article in here that said that that said that he was working on Mission Impossible Two. And then, but it's weird because they knew that he was in that, and then he ended up not, not being in this movie. Um, did you know? that at this time there was uh, at least enough talk about this happening that he's pictured as this that Schwarzenegger was supposed to do a Doc Savage movie? No. I didn't I know that. that he was supposed to be Dr. Manhattan at one point. Oh, that I didn't know. That I didn't know, but he is yeah, listed yeah. in here well, as... That's one of the most fun games in the world is doing a Schwarzenegger impersonation for Manhattan lines. He's listed in here. I sit here now, and it is 1985. As, as playing Doc Savage. And at the same time, it's 1942. And I will read you all these other movies that they thought were going to happen. Some of them happened, but some of them happened different times than than what they than what they thought. Even with different uh, casts and ended up being or different, you know, you know, uh, uh, there were just different projects. But um, but let's see, uh, Doc Savage, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then it was supposed well, to be. Well, would have made sense at that time because it would have been. We would have just had the Shadow, the Phantom, a lot of characters like that. And it was supposed to be directed by, uh, co-directed by uh, Frank Darabont and Chuck Russell. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it says. Uh, the uh, despite a cool recept a uh, cool reception. Ha- See, this thing just wants to make fun of Batman and Robin because it was like two years before this. Um, despite a cool reception for his role as Mister Freeze, Schwarzenegger returns to comics or more appropriately pulp no- novels by launching an all new franchise based on adventure Doc Savage, who hasn't seen life on the big screen since former Tarzan Ron Eli played the Man of Bronze in a 1975 box office bomb. I didn't even know about that. Yeah, it's uh. It's something that's half. It is like literally the halfway point between '60s Batman and '89 Batman. Half of the half of that movie is playing it straight, and half of that movie is chaos. Oh, Chuck it's a Russell! Film. Chuck Russell did the mask. That's why I've heard that name, and that would make and, and that would be why he was being talked about for that project because he successfully made a comic book thing happen. Okay, um, but I want to talk about some of these other things, um, uh, outside of uh, outside of X Men. Although I do think it's it's interesting that uh, the again this is before we had any set photography or anything because uh, nothing had been shot yet. That you've got um a photoshopped image of uh, what Mystique might look like if she looked like she was in the comics. Look at this. Look at this. This photoshopped <laughs> image. <laughs> Is it, isn't that great? And just, again, just um, like imagine this and then think about like like everybody knows that look, the, the movie look of Mystique, much better than the comic book look now. And we, we've seen it yeah. five times. And with different actresses. But but uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, so other movies that this thinks is happening. Um, Spawn two. Does it have Lobo? Lobo's always in those old. Lo- Lobo those is movie getting made. Lobo's not in this. Uh, Spawn two. Uh, release date two thousand one at the earliest. <laughs> <laughs> Still waiting on it. Uh. Original Spawn guy, Michael Jai White, hasn't officially signed yet to reprise his role, and Spawn creator and screenwriter Todd McFarlane, his voice interest in directing the sequel, he's already held music videos for Pearl Jam and Korn, and as we know with a lot of superhero projects, really the only prerequisite is that you've directed music videos. Um, Evidently, Spawn 2 will focus more on atmosphere than special effects, which is, of course, the main thing he's still saying today. Um, At the time, uh, so the, the next one is Batman 5, and uh, they thought that might come out as early as 2001, and this was during the period that Schumacher was still maybe going to be involved and was still trying to get something like Year One off the ground. And that was the time where where there was okay. So did you know that uh, one of the Bat scripts, one of the Batman scripts, was called Batman: The Joker's Revenge, and was just going to full on bring back Jack Nicholson? 
I've never heard that. I've never heard that either. And they're also talking about uh, Batman Superman at this point and calling it World's Finest. That script you can find online. Yeah. Um, but I never remembered exactly and that when, it, one, where, where, when was, it was. That. I think the idea was to bring Jack Nicholson back because the Joker's in that. Oh, he's in that. See, the thing I re- the thing I had heard was that there was a script where they were going to do Harley Quinn and Joker was going to and, and Jack Nicholson was going to come back only in dream sequences. That is, well, is I that triumphant? Found out. Is that triumphant I, or is that something else? Yeah, except I recently found out it wasn't going to be called triumphant. It was called like Batman Unchained, I think. And That's interesting. Given the I Superman read an interview thing. with the writer of the script, who who is like, I have no idea where Triumphant came from. I have no idea why people have been calling it Batman Triumphant. It was never called Batman Triumphant. The script was called Batman Chain, and it was it was Harley Quinn and Scarecrow. Yeah, and and the the, the hallucinations was where Jack Nicholson was going to come back. Yeah. Okay, so so yeah. that so that was actually a thing because I, I I remember hearing that going back to to this like like I remember in the late nineties hearing that. I'm gonna see if I can find uh, that, a link to that to that interview and I'll send it to you uh, with the guy who wrote that script. Interesting. Like, and he he clears things up and says like no that was just a rumor but this is an actual thing that's in the script kind of thing. It's really interesting. So then uh, Men in Black Two was mentioned in this and of course that did happen uh, not horribly long after that that was 03. Um, no, it didn't. And don't, then, don't you lie to the people. <laughs> and then, um, I, mean, I didn't say it was good. We, 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 just did, we just did a commentary on that movie. Um, and then uh, Superman, uh, it basically just, it's, it's been stuck in, in, in development hell and maybe someday it will happen. Is this still um, the like Tim Burton Superman? Well, let's see what it says. The revolving door of screenwriters which began with Kevin Smith's much... Pu- and Kevin Smith's mentioned all over this thing, by the way. Um, with Kevin Smith's much publicized, rejected superscript continues with uh, Wisher? Terminator 2. And love him or hate him, Nicolas Cage still wants to wear the red and blue tick. God, that even even that even that lady still trying to do it. Um, Young Turk directors Brett Ratner, that's interesting. Um, Shakar uh, Caper from Elizabeth. Wow, that would have been an interesting movie. Uh, the guy who directed Elizabeth doing a Superman movie. Um, and Michael Bay have been courted by Warner's to direct the pick, but so far none have, accept- have accepted it. Of course, See, it's interesting that that never got anything close. Courted and not are courting Warner's. This is people Warner Brothers has come to and said, hey, will you make this? That's a, Not people coming to Warner Brothers saying, hey, can I... Like, Michael Bay didn't go, hey, can I make a Superman movie? That's a great point. See, this is the reason I wanted you on this video, because <laughs> you have those sorts of insights that I wouldn't have thought of. Um, okay, you ready for this? Flaming Carrot. Was it... it did that eventually become Mystery Man? Was it going to spin out of Mystery Man? It was going to spin out of Mystery Man. Uh, when presented at Wizard World 99 uh, comic convention on whether or not the cult fave Flaming Carrot would join the fellow working class superheroes in Mystery Man, and I always forget that they're. Oh, uh, it's okay. Um, I wasn't saying anything all that important. Uh, I, I always forget that they're that that, uh, that Mystery Man and, and uh, Flaming Carrot are even connected. Um, uh, creator Bob Burden didn't hop around the issue. He set his sights on the carrot appearing in the sequel, and then that just never happened. So. Um. And then, yeah, and I, I wouldn't have thought that that did well enough to really warrant a sequel. No. I, I mean, I love that movie, but yeah. I don't think it did that well. I liked it a lot, too. It's so weird, because because there are some things that I've done rewinds on that I that I, that I spent a lot of time with and I remember almost nothing about. Like, Mystery Men is not a movie that stuck with me. I did, like, 28 minutes on that. I don't remember much about it. Um, I, I remember it top to bottom. Preacher was being talked about at that time. Yeah, that, that was that was in uh that was in development for forever. Yeah. And and I, I didn't know it was that far back and I mean like that's just now happening as a TV show. I um, remember around X2 reading uh interviews where James Marsters was talking about that he was reading that he was reading for the part of uh, Jesse. One thing I think is interesting also is uh, the movies that actually did happen, but the magazine acts like they might take longer than they did. Like, we got this weird reversal thing where there are movies that it seems like it thinks are going to come out. Like, Spawn 2, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's going to happen. And then, you know, it's never happened. But then uh, Blade 2, it acts like uh, Wesley Snipes is too committed to other things, so it might take a long time, but then it didn't take that much longer for that to come out. 
And I. Uh, what do do between Blade and Blade 2? Honestly, I don't. And it doesn't mention here. We'd have to look it up. Uh, but it does mention <laughs> the, the thing about Morbius and how he was originally supposed to be in the sequel. And then. Um, they had to get rid of that because of uh, royalties and ownership problems. Is that all in there? Yeah, that's all in here. Wow, that's really early. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, just stuff like this is really interesting, yeah. Uh, and then Hellboy, did you know that there was a teaser poster that said that that was supposed to come out in 2000, but then they had to push it back? No. Because Hell, Hellboy didn't come out until what, like 03, 04? 04, 04, I think. 03, was 03 is what I was thinking. I think it's 04. Uh, it might be 04. But yeah, uh, reportedly, uh, Hellboy will be brought to life using a mix of makeup, animatronics, and computer generated effects, uh, which which was true and happened, but uh, you know, not for four years after that. Yeah, interesting. And then Doc Savage, does we it, talked does about. Does it link Del Toro to the project at that point? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they already had a they already had a script, you know, that was finished. Well, and, and again, like they had already made a teaser poster, so like they were really, you know, ready ready for it. They thought. Uh, and then, Bone. I never heard of that being talked about as being a film. I I like vaguely, but always as like an animated film. Maybe might happen. Oh yeah, that's what they're talking about it uh, here as too. But like you'd have to do that animated, I think. And then uh, and then yeah. I guess. Uh, she did that actually come out? Because there's a poster for it. What's it called? Uh, she. She, as in the, uh, the books the by the guy that did King Solomon's Mind. Yeah, the 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 samurai check. I don't think it came out. Weird, because it has a. Anyway, I've I've never I've never looked into that, but that, that might be a thing that happened. <laughs> and then uh, and then it talks about other movies that are kind of in limbo, um, including things that of course uh, did come out. And this is interesting. This is ninety nine. Daredevil came out in two thousand three, and at this point it was it was like that might someday happen, maybe. Uh, and of course you had to have you had, you had to have Spider Man. By the way, they think Spider Man is going to be played by some other actor too, um, in this. Uh, we didn't we didn't talk about that. Uh, oh, I forgot about this. The first people they went to. Oh, the, okay, this is all really interesting. The first people they went to were the Wachowski brothers to direct Spider Man. Spider Man, yeah, and they turned it down. Well, there's a couple of Matrix shots in that first Spider Man. You, you know why they turned it down? Because they wanted to make plastic man. No, because Sony wouldn't let them write it. Wow, that they were right about that. I mean, that was for the best. Uh, I I think. Um, nevertheless, the project proceeds apace with up and coming actor. Ready for this? Do you know about this? Heath Ledger, currently As leading, uh, currently leading the pack to play Peter Parker, and he wow. is, and he is in a tiny. I didn't even recognize him. He's in a tiny picture on the cover. As uh, uh, as this is going to be the guy that's going to put that we think is going to play Spider Man. Wow! Wild, you guys. I mean, we're talking nine years before Dark Knight comes out. Uh, this is you see, you see what I wanted to talk about. This is fascinating. I I did not yeah. know that. And these are some of this is stuff that is not going to show up online. Like somebody would have to find this specific magazine, go on Wiki, type it all out. And we mm. have we have this idea sometimes that everything that's worth knowing is already on the internet. It's not true. Uh, it's 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 like like this this stuff is as artifacts. It's, I don't know if this is worth knowing. The that that they oh yeah it is yeah it is sure it is <laughs> that that there, that there was a lot of talk about Ledger playing Spider Man. That's fascinating. Nobody no nobody talks about that. It's really interesting. That's true. Yeah, um, and then uh, and then you know Iron Man is listed in here as a thing that uh, that is that the Tom Cruise version? Yeah, and Nicolas Cage, of course, wanted to do that, but Nicolas Cage wanted to do everything. Um, did you know that... that yeah, I, Nicolas Cage wanted to be everything. Did you know that Chris Columbus was uh, talking about uh, directing Daredevil? That doesn't seem like the right fit. No. I, but, yeah. That's weird. I never knew that. Isn't that strange? Uh, what else? Okay, and you then... The slum it with those Harry Potter movies. And then Wesley Snipes wanted to play... Black eating at soup kitchens now. What? <laughs> Wesley Snipes wanted to play Black Panther. So that's interesting. Um, oh, also about Daredevil, uh, Kevin Smith was supposed to write it. Did you know that? 
I didn't know. He's never said he was attached to that. That's interesting. Well, actually, he now that I'm... about being attached... Now that I'm looking at this, that's maybe saying a little bit too much. I love this. I love this. This is so Kevin Smith, too. It says... And this isn't even a direct quote. Just the way... Just, just the, the attitude it has about this. It says... Um, it might Daredevil might be in better uh, uh, better off in the hands of director slash Daredevil comic scripter Kevin Smith, who has expressed mild interest. <laughs> well, and this would have been right around. What, what, what did you say this was ninety nine? Uh, yeah, because this is if this yeah. is ninety nine, this is when Kevin Smith is writing Daredevil. This is when Guardian Devil is coming out. I can't remember if it was you or somebody else that I had this conversation with the other day about how uh, New Gods would be worth doing as a movie. There was talk about a New Gods movie. I'd never heard that. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we talked about that. Did we talk about that? That that like that like there was there was a there was a script for a oh it was just for an animation movie. That's why. That's why. Okay, I didn't know that. And then of course the Sandman movie, which has been in limbo forever. Um, okay, the last thing I want to look at is uh, this list that it says at the end of uh, 10 tips to make a successful comic book movie. And I want to I see Ooh, how... these are exciting. I want to see how many of these we agree with. Okay. Uh, because we've now seen a lot of successful comic book movies since this. I because, really hope the first one is always start with the origin. Um, nope. But the, but origin is mentioned. So the uh, so number ten is uh, is the screenplay, and it says just because a movie subject matter may focus on a comic book character doesn't mean you have to make to have a comic book writer write the movie. Yeah, but sometimes it's a good idea. Yes. Uh, why five words? Frank Miller's RoboCop two and three. See, that's but that's not why those didn't work. They 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 screwed with the with the scripts, right? Yeah. Well, and also. Like, that wasn't... I didn't happen till later, but, you know, Frank Miller's Sin City is just Frank Miller's Sin City. Yeah, yeah, that's not because they got a... Okay, this is weird. They're, they're basically acting like... Because then it says, comics and movies are two different mediums. Get top-flight screenwriters, familiarize them with the subject matter, and make sure they understand the character and the world they live in. Your end product should be a story that retains enough of the comic element to appease fanboys and little, if any, comic booky cheese that would shoo off the mainstream audience. I, I don't know about that. This is such a pre-Bendis era. Right? Yeah. Because Bendis writes screenplays as comic There's, books. You could easily throw them on a movie, scri uh, and, a movie screenplay. And these days, of course, there are a lot of comic book writers that move to the screenplay arena. But also, what's weird about this is this this seems ignorant even in 1999 to me because weren't there already plenty of comic book writers that had moved to animation and were doing a lot of... You know, like like Fox Fox cartoons and things like that. Like we had plenty of people that lived in both of those worlds. Can you hear me? Yep, I uh, I lost you for like a split second. Yeah, I, and and you 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 dropped off my monitor. Uh, and then number nine, oh. don't dumb it down. It ain't rocket science, but it doesn't have to be inane drivel either. Despite the name, comics can be as serious as any literary work. And of course, you know we 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 have proven that now. Uh, even with capes and tights, superhero movies are a work of fantasy, just like Star Wars: The Matrix and Conan the Barbarian. It's so weird to think that the Matrix had come out, but not Spider Man and not X Men and um the heroes and villains we're in. A of course, this would have been immediately after the Matrix in '99, because of course, we, of course, you, yeah. you get, you get uh, X Men just after this. Uh, the uh, heroes and villains wear cool outfits, beat the crap out of each other, and treat it all with a serious, when appropriate tone. Um, okay, well, they got that one kind of right. Uh, number eight: Stay true to the subject matter, uh, but don't be handcuffed by it. You can make the Red Skull Italian in Captain America, and it doesn't really affect the story much. I don't agree with that. Uh, I, I agree with the sentiment. I don't agree with that example. No, that's that's crazy. Are, are we? Are they? Are they saying that movie worked? Um, I, I I don't I don't mean to read into one little comment, but I, but I'm but I'm just saying that like really because well, at that, that point, if you had to make a top ten list, that would probably be number ten. On the flip side, once you start transforming the Batman mythos back into the campy Drek it was in the '60s, it's time to pack it in. Well, you know, I'm not going to agree with calling '60s Batman Drek, but uh, number seven, the Drek. See, that's just. That's just projecting the sentiment of the time. You know, we got to get away from that because we just had crappy Batman and Robin, um, and we want to make fun of that all over this thing, as you'll see here in a minute. Uh, the budget. This this one's interesting. A problem that faces more than just comic book movies. In this age of Hollywood excess, good movie scripts are being sacrificed for special effects by the buttload. Here's an idea: take some of that money, hire I'm so better. I'm glad we got past that. Uh, here, <laughs> here's an idea: take some of that money and hire better writers. 
And then in their list of good writers, they put Quentin Tarantino, okay, J. Michael Straczynski, okay, the Wachowski brothers. Well, The Matrix had just come out, and Bound was kind of successful. Yeah, yeah, it just come out, and they didn't realize that uh, they got pulled off that project, and that it was kind of, uh, and that the rest of it was kind of directed by somebody else, and that there's a reason that Sony said they shouldn't write Spider-Man. Anyway, uh, and then it says better fight coordinators and only where needed. No way around it. Superman must fly. Toss some cash to the special effects department. I mean, yeah, sure, but then you have the problem the other direction sometimes where it's all special effects and, you know, all style and the substance. Number six, uh, screw A-list actors. Different time, yeah? Oh, yeah. Except where appropriate. Marlon Brando as Jarrell, great Ian McKellen as Magneto. <laughs> Except for when it works. Don't ever do this. Except for <laughs> Except every it time works. it does well. Nicholas Cage as Superman on um, pass. Instead of <laughs> indulging Hollywood heavyweights' pipe dreams of playing their favorite childhood superheroes, Cammy okay, I mean, I agree with that with, uh, with with uh, Nicolas Cage because of what happened with Ghost Rider. Uh, comic movie producers need to think what's best for the movie and the audience. That's why Christopher Reeve beat out John Travolta for Superman. Despite the mega success of Saturday Night Fever, uh, Vinny Bar Barbino would not a good Man of Steel make. Okay, well, I mean, I agree with some of that. I just, like, that feels like such a, like, a case-by-case -case basis. Like, that's yeah. not a rule. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, don't cast stars, except for the fact that all of the Batman villains have been stars, and they were <laughs> enormous successes. Well, you're right, and it's it's acting like you know it's all in hindsight. It's it's like it's like no when it's going to work. It's like it, it's acting like it's common sense, but it's like we have but we have had character actors that seemed like they might be counterintuitive for a, for a role, and then you see them, and you go, oh yeah, that was perfect. I never would have thought that. So yeah, so that, yeah, that's. We're not, we're not thinking there. Uh, and then number five, Origin Schmorigin. Find a way to recap the hero's beginnings without dragging the viewer through endless flashbacks. Take a cue from James Bond with subtle reminders. We get all we need to know. Uh, that's basically... That's, that's I, I couldn't agree with that more. Um, it, but once again, except for when it works, right? Like... Well, yeah thought that with Batman, but then Batman Begins, like, you know, handled it really well, so, like, but that one I'm is... Just saying, I'm not saying it can't work. But right. I mean, but that one is more common sense than the actor thing, maybe. I mean, like, um... Okay, I mean, maybe it's sort of common sense that John Travolta would make a good Superman. But, well, anyway. But, well, but, like, like, Spider-Man's origin works, but you can also do it without Spider-Man's origin. Like, it yeah. feels like a, a kind of thing where, like, Again, like, I wouldn't make a rule of this. Yeah. Well, and, again, case by case, certain, and I've said this a thousand times, but certain origins for superheroes just are already really good stories, and they should be adapted. And that that is true of uh, of, of Spider-Man, though for a long time I didn't think it was. Um, and that, of course, is true of Batman. But with Batman, it was more because that was a story that hadn't been told, so you could kind of do whatever you wanted to with it. Well, and I, and I kind of felt like there's no real story to tell with Captain America's origin, and I was mostly wrong. I, I, I feel like they, they really got, like, a great character uh, piece out of the first, like, half of that movie, where it's him slowly becoming Captain America. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, before that movie came out, I was like, why would you do an origin? It's a skinny kid that goes in a vat, in, in a vat of chemicals. And then, and of course this is hyperbolic, but then it makes me go back to my uh, old mentor from writing school who says you can make anything work, you just have to make it work. Uh, could you make, finally, the Fantastic Four origin movie where the whole thing is them getting their powers and then they... And, 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 like, yeah, like, you do it as could, a period piece in the 60s. Could you make that? Like, I guess you could. I've yeah. always said it seems like a thing that you... It seems like a really throwaway origin, but yeah, I guess you could. I mean, we just haven't really seen it done yet. Yeah, you just have to do it as a period piece of the 60s where they're actually trying to beat the Ruskies to the moon. So we know that... And you make it mod and retro. We know this is a pandering magazine article with number four because it says, no Joel Schumacher, and then it says, just trust us on this. And I 100% disagree with that. Eric? Are you there? You broke up for a second. Of course I did. Can you hear me? I okay? heard magazine articles, and I don't agree with it. Yeah, oh, oh that's great. I just, I just, add, you know, I, I shouldn't make a rule out of it. I should go case by case, but I don't, I don't agree with magazine articles, Eric. I just, <laughs> that, that's, that's a number. No, um, it's number, can you hear me okay? 
Yeah. It's number four is no Joel Schumacher, just trust us on this. They're pandering, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Joel Schumacher is a good director. He's hit and miss. He's made some not-so-good movies. But you look at what he wanted to make and what they asked him to make, and he just gave the studio what they wanted. Yeah. And you can say he sold out or whatever, but you can't say that he couldn't make a good Batman movie if you let him loose. I... I kind of want Joel Schumacher to come back and make a superhero movie that blows everybody's socks off. So do I. I want him to get to do something. Um, yeah. You know, and I mean, I mean, like, like he's he's made good movies, and he directed an episode of House of Cards, and like people don't think about stuff like that because they just think of the the, the crappy Batman movie. And um, you know, he's he's always I just made what they asked me to. Like, like he's a, the thing is he's he a versatile director. Responsibility for actually making it, but it's not that it was his vision. No, it wasn't his vision, and he maybe went too far and way over the top with what they asked him to do. But like, and, and I mean, like you know, people people think have have told me that I'm too much of an apologist for Joel Schumacher, but like he's a versatile director and he gets crap for yeah, being for versatile. Eight millimeter. Yeah, he gets crap for doing his job. Someone was going to make that movie, and no matter who directed that, with what Warner's wanted, it wasn't going to be a good movie. And it's, I don't know, it's 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 a reputation only among, like, comic book people, because we all won't forget Batman Robin. Yeah, and it hurt his career, I think. And it really shouldn't have. But, well, I mean, that's the thing, is that, of course, he's going to be the scapegoat, but then it happened that way because that's what, you know, they asked for. Well, um, number three, the bad guy. Sorry, were you were you, were you going to belabor this even farther? No. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, number three, the bad guy. Take another cue from the Bond franchise. Use one main villain. Okay, I generally agree with this. Uh, make him or her charismatic, motivated, and menacing. That way the audience might care. And for the love of God, not every villain must be personally linked to the hero for the good guy to have motivation to kick his ass. Superheroes fight all bad guys. That's their job. Well, what do That's you think a of, bad word. What do you think of that? Well, I was reading. <laughs> what what do you what do you think oh, of that? So I can get away with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have wrote it down. I was just reading what I wrote. You can't. I would have looked. Can't. I would have looked. He's like, it's in my notes. No, that's not how this works. Any, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what do you think of that? Um, that's pretty sound advice. I, although it's kind of interesting because of when this came out. Yeah. The only one who really breaks that rule. Poorly is uh, Batman, Batman Robin. Because yeah. Forever was at least a success. You know, well, how people feel about it. it was a success. So was Returns. Right, and and eighty nine has that too. But like, are are we already criticizing eighty nine really hard for the Joker having an origin for the because of like animated series and things like that? Like, 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 is that what we're referring to here? No, no, no. no. Where it's no, like no. people are criticizing eighty nine for making the Joker Batman's killer or Batman's parents killer. No, no, but that's the point I'm making is that he's connected to Batman personally, and this is saying that you shouldn't do that, and maybe. It's talking about that also, but as early as 99, were we criticizing that? Because I didn't hear that criticism for anybody until, like, mid-2000s. No, no, no. I, I, I think that that was a thing that people criticized. Okay. Um, I, I just, I grew up with this haze of 89 is perfect and nothing can touch it, right? And, like, I, I didn't say, like, honestly, I had to meet you before I heard any criticisms of 89 at all. And You know, I, I think the first time I saw, like, extensive criticisms was in Wizard... Joss Whedon did an article that it was like the top ten uh, Batman movies that aren't Batman movies, and number oh, one was Spider Man. Sam Raimi's Spider Man. That's interesting. With a score yeah. by Danny Elfman. Um, number two is Secret Identity. The comic book is called Batman and not Bruce Wayne for a reason. Interesting. While Secret Identity is. Interesting. Uh, five years before it begins, yes. Uh, while interesting, a, right after Batman and Robin, yes. Yeah, yeah. While a secret identity, both, but we got it in both directions. Uh, while a secret identity is a necessity, the true star of the film is the dude in the latex. Don't eat up too much airtime with the alter egos, and in the case of Hollywood movie stars, inflated egos. So we're asking for more yeah, serious. Robert Downey Jr. We're asking for. <laughs> And, and remember, he's just making fun of this in hindsight. We know that these people didn't know that was going to happen. Um, but but um, it's but it's interesting because uh, it's saying we need more serious movies, but it's also saying uh, like like don't 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 try to do the character but don't, piece but thing. Don't press the no button. That's not going to work. 
Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, but I also think it's it's kind of saying like like the pe- let's be realistic. The people that make these movies, they're not gonna make good movies. <laughs> You know, um, and then number, uh, let's see, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, number one, sacrifice on the merchandising altar. Movie tie-in merchandise means big business. That's a fact of life. There's no escaping it. But to set out and purposefully make a movie that has little substance other than to showcase as much merchandise, but uh, but stay away from the alter egos, um, as much merchandise tie-ins as possible will kill a movie and stall the sales of all those Happy Meal toys. Anybody see Godzilla? If you make a good movie, the merchandise will be there, Go ask George Lucas. This was 99. And I don't know if this was... Uh, this would have had to have come out before uh, uh, episode one. So that's... I'm not sure where 99 episode one is. Uh, I thought it was another Christmas release. I thought it was May. I, I oh, you know what? Maybe I it was. It for my birthday, because, be wrong. because it's easy to look at this out of context and say, oh, okay, well, George Lucas, of course, you know, Star Wars was a good movie and they had merchandising. Remember, but but they remember, might be talking... Context, there is a... About, historically, there is a six-month haze yeah. where everyone loves Phantom Menace. Yeah, I know. And that's why, that's why it's bad. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that. It's really interesting. That, like, that's probably what he's talking about. I didn't even think of that. Uh, well, do, do you agree with that, mostly? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess, yeah. A lot of these rules are, like, really vague, where it's like, well, yeah. Yeah. You, you know what you wouldn't write, that list but, today? But you wouldn't, write, you wouldn't write that list now, which is just the reason I wanted to read it. But you know what? What would be on that list today? Where you would write exactly that list. Yeah, go ahead. Keep your mask on, <laughs> Captain America. Yeah, which I don't know why that's a thing. He doesn't even have a secret identity. I don't... I don't understand why people complain about the Captain America mask thing. I get it with Spider Man. I mean, like, is it? It's in Raimi's Spider. Like, 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 I get it with characters that are trying to keep their identity secret. But like, why do we complain about it with somebody like Captain America or or Iron Man? Like, because Captain America's mask is a helmet that protects him from being shot in the face. <laughs> oh, 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 well, that's so, true. At the end of the movie, at the the, the the spot where he is most likely to get shot in the face is when he decides to not wear it. I mean, that's fair, but I've never actually heard anybody like 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 articulate an argument about this and I didn't think of it. It's just a thing that I don't I didn't think about. So, I thought it was just we want our superheroes to keep their masks on. Like like is that the argument that people use? Is it's a helmet. Keep it on. Cuz okay, that makes sense. No, it's not the, it, it's not on a character level it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I would be more okay if he just never wore a mask. If that would make more sense than he has a, a protective piece of armor <laughs> that he just takes off at, during the biggest fight of the film. Uh, well, anyway, I just thought this was kind of fascinating and wanted to share it with you. Yeah, no, that that's that's really interesting. Uh, everybody, thanks as always for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I, Eric had no idea what we were doing. I just brought him in here and was like, there's this thing, and you'll find it interesting, but I don't want to tell you anything about it until we get started. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. We sure appreciate it. I'm it's Captain the Logan. the same thing right before he invited me into a van. Yeah, but um, no one is supposed to know about that. And <laughs> we we had you signed a waiver. <laughs> uh, thanks. Your signature counts. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Eric. (laughs) See you next time.